What would be the issues we would expect to see during the backswing as the handicaps get higher? The higher the handicap, the hips would move the furthest to the right on the backswing with the least amount of turn. So the worse the golfer. Yeah, the higher the handicap. The more the hips work away from the target. Yep, more sway, more, more sway. sway, and less, less turn. Less turn. Well, if that's true, that would mean that the better player, the lower handicap. Do the opposite. Would do the opposite. Yep. Their hips would actually work towards the target. Much, uh, much more and faster than the higher handicap. And there would be more turn in the, uh, in the pelvis. All right, guys, we're gonna take a quick break from today's video to talk about the sponsor of this video, which is Aura. Aura really has every single feature that I and you could possibly want for data protection and personal privacy on one app right here on your phone. I'm sure you guys are annoyed by all the robo callers you get. Listen, I could get like 10, 20, even 30 per day, which is obviously super frustrating. And what's really cool is they reach out to the data brokers and get all of your information off there so you don't keep getting those 10, 20, or 30 robocallers per day. Every Aura plan comes with a premium VPN solution that protects your privacy online with military-grade encryption. You can turn your VPN on when you're connected to public Wi-Fi networks like hotels or coffee shops, even local golf courses, to keep your online activities private and secure. Personal identity protection is a big deal and it's only gonna become more and more of a big deal and harder to control, which is why I wanna get out ahead of it with Aura. I know you would want to as well. They're gonna offer you a two week free trial. So download the app in my description below, try it out for two weeks, see if you like it. And thanks Aura for sponsoring today's video. All right guys, in today's video, we're gonna talk about something that Steve and I literally teach every single day to help our students get better contact, more power, swing more from inside, reduce some early extension. A little bit, I yeah. believe, right? Yeah. And what we're talking about is how your hips work during the backswing. And there's certain things you can do that you're gonna get all those benefits I mentioned, but if you're like a lot of golfers that we work with, it's very likely you're doing one of the incorrect pieces, which could be causing you all the frustration that you're getting. With that said, yep. Steve, Let's talk about during the backswing, how the hips work. If we were to look at like a hundred golfers and we looked at lower handicaps, middle handicaps and higher handicaps, what would be the issues we would expect to see during the backswing as the handicaps get higher? The higher the handicap, the hips would move the furthest to the right on the backswing with the least amount of turn. So the worse the golfer. Yeah, the higher the handicap. The more the hips work away from the target. Yep, more sway, more, more sway. sway and less, less turn. Less turn. Well, if that's true, that would mean that the better player, the lower handicap. Do the opposite. Would do the opposite. Yep. Their hips would actually work towards the target. Much, uh, much more and faster than the higher handicap. And there would be more turn in the, uh, in the pelvis. So the better the golfer, the hips are, and let's even just say if they're staying more centered, and we'll show from down the line how they work yep. towards it, but the hips are staying more centered and they have more hip rotation. Yes. Right. And that gives those benefits that we talked about mm -hmm. that you would expect to see. Now, if the golfer has too much sway away and not enough turn, what would be some of the issues they would run into? Contact where the club hits the ground, it would hit further back on the ground. Like uh, fats and thins? Yes, okay. fats and thins. They would also, because as they're swaying to the right and have no turn, their arms would start lifting. They mm. would start coming across the ball or over the top and um, less power. And less power. So if you have any of those things in your swing, this is one of those root things you want to look for earlier on that could be causing that. If you're too far over the top, you hit the ball too short, you have contact inconsistencies, you want to look at these. And we're going to talk a little bit about, um, well, let's talk about what's responsible for it first, and yep. then we'll do the drill. We got a really cool drill and some images to show you. So what, what is the main or the main things that are responsible for doing this correctly versus incorrectly? How your knees, I would say how, well, you can start a little bit with the setup with, okay. the, with the feet being flared out more, rotating the feet and rotating the knees out more relative to the target line. Okay. That'll help make it easier to change the knee flex going back, which is really, I would say, the culprit. I would say poor knee flex is really what's leading to the, um, the, the hips bad being, version. Yes. So e even at the setup, Steve, so like if I have my feet pointed straighter in and my yeah, knees if are in, if they're like perpendicular to the target line, that'd be bad. Yes. 
and that would make it harder to do the things. It makes it harder to, to have the, the turn, the okay. hips to turn properly. And it's also promoting a little bit of the sway to the right okay. on the back swing. So I'm going to point my toes out. Yep. Lay your feet out more. And if you really are struggling, you could rotate them out 30, 40 degrees if you really are having a hard time. That's going to help just... me stay more centered and turn more. And it's, yes, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And then you said the knees. The knees are rotated out as well. And that means they're pointed like out towards the toes? Mm -hmm. Okay. Correct. So start with the setup. And then, and then how does the knee and leg stuff work on the way back? So on the back swing, you would have the left knee would bend down more. It almost feels like your left knee is going over top of your left foot going back. And as that's happening, the right leg is straightening. Okay. So the left knee's bending, the right leg's straightening. That's allowing, again, do it one more time. That's allowing the hips to turn and also turn more at a tilted angle. You can also see from the front how the knees are more at, at a tilt. So the right leg gets higher, the left leg gets a little bit shorter as that's happening. And so if I allow my, and we'll show a, a nice picture of Grant Waite from down the line here. When we go back, you're saying the left knee's increasing its bend. Correct and the right leg or knee is decreasing its bend or straightening itself. Correct. And so if I did the opposite, like if we have the bad version, even if we had like the toes in and the knees in, which is like 95 out of 100 times I see the sway like that, it's Yeah, bad. It's, it starts there. You, yeah. You'll start to see that the, the left knee joint would go more in than down on the backswing. And even like the right knee starts going in and the right foot starts rolling off the ground. We see this a lot. Yes. Yeah. It's, very, it's a very common, uh, common pattern. Very common. So feet out or toes out, knees out. Yep. Now, when I go back and I'm doing my... Um, the leg motion, if I did this incorrectly and I, let, let's say like I increased the bend of my leg or didn't straighten it enough. Yeah. That would be, a, that would make me do the bad. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So if I keep my right leg too bent too long, or I'm trying to do or keep that bend in my leg, that actually makes it harder to turn the hips. That'd make me sway more. And you could hurt your back, your lower back doing that as well. So sometimes we'll see anomalies of like best players in the world who can move well and get away with stuff. But if we're looking at like an average golfer we work with and how the body works, you know, again, we'll say 99 out of 100, um, they need to have as much or more straightening of the trail leg, yep. right? More of the hip turn, less of the sway. Correct. So I don't think a lot of you guys that are watching maybe think that much about how you change the flex in your legs or where your feet are at setup, but what a dramatic difference that has on how you have this pelvic turn, which like Steve said, that's going to then affect your ability to get the arms and hands deep and low enough, right? And have more uh, shoulder turn as well because you're having more hip turn. Right. So if you're like, oh, I'm not flexible enough to be able to turn. Well, maybe we've got to start from the ground up and right. work our way back. Right. With that said, Steve has a really cool drill. I saw this from Steve. I don't know where you learned it from, but Steve showed me this a, a long time ago. And I use this and that chair drill all the mm -hmm. time. And so maybe from the down the line angle, yeah. if we go from this side, if you can show us kind of how this works. Yep, so this is one I got from uh, from Andy back in the day. He put a, a club right on the ground, right against your left heel. Okay. And as you're going back, as you're changing your knee flex and going back, you're feeling like your tailbone is moving forward towards the towards your left ankle to make it so at the top of your swing, you gotta go to the top of your swing, that as that tail, tailbone's turn, as your hips are turning, the tailbone's moving forward, be over top of the, the shaft that's on the ground by your left ankle. And we have some really cool um, visuals we'll put on here. There's Gary Player, I think, in the white hat. There's Arnold Palmer, and there's Jack Nicholas. Said, three, Nicholas yeah. three of the best of all time. Yeah, pretty good golfers. They're right pretty there. good. And you'll see the lines on, on them, too. Because sometimes I think when someone's not used to this, you might see it. And it might be a little counterintuitive. Like, all right, I'm supposed to have this kind of big motion here, big motion here. But, you know, success leaves clues with those guys yep. where their pelvis is. They all look the same as yeah, this. So put it right there, right against your left heel. Inside the heel. Yeah. So I'm feeling this going that way. Your tailbone's going towards the um, the club on the ground. That's proper right there. Okay. Right into there. I'm going to do that one more time. Now, if I'm doing that, and I bring that back over here for a second, and I'm going to hit one or two with that, let's also like what I'm feeling as I'm creating that. So the tailbone working towards the target. Correct. But I'm, I'm, I'm definitely highlighting like the increase of my, my left knees bending yep. towards my toes, like you said, and I'm allowing the trail leg to extend yep. to straighten. And it's probably for some people that are doing this, it might feel like you're really moving your hips forward 
yeah. as you're doing it because of how much sway that you originally had. Let's talk about some checkpoints in a moment. Let me just hit one with that sensation. So left leg bends, right leg straightens, and my pelvis feels like it's working towards my left ankle. Correct. Solid nice draw shot. Yep. So And high. And far? Yeah. You always hit it far, but that was high. So Steve brings up a great point too, because di different people are going to be at different places in their journey, right? If you're a golfer who has a good amount of sway to the right, and even if you only have a little bit, more often than not, you're going to need to feel this more than you think. For some, right? it might feel like you're turning around your left foot. Yeah, it might feel it might very feel far that forward. way because if you have if you're swaying your pelvis three to four inches off the ball, if you're going this way. It might feel in the beginning like you're really cranking this way. Yeah. To just look normal. Correct. So let's checkpoint wise, if someone's practicing right around video, what are some good checkpoints to make sure they don't do too much or how much are we looking for? Let's let's use like the right hip. Yeah. So if you're filming, if you're filming your swing from the front view. Yeah, you can kind of hold a club yeah. on it maybe. And if you're putting a, a line or you put your finger right up against your uh, right hip right here. Yep as you would go back from set up to the top, the hip would move away from that line, say about an inch. Okay, so if there was an, you're saying if there was an object here. Yeah, if you put, if, here, I'll do it from behind. Yeah. So you can actually make a swing. So I put the, this club right against your right hip. Yeah. As you swing back, you see how it increased. Yeah, okay. So it moved about an inch away from this club. So your hips are turning and they're moving slightly forward towards the target on the back swing. So not enough, can you do that one more time? Yeah. Not enough would be, or the worst thing, but I don't want to bump into that. You would bump into it or the hip would go past it. So I'd go this way. Yes. And then too much would be creating like three or four inches of space. Typically, if you have that problem, you're a low handicap. Yeah, it's a good problem. Yeah. Big tax bill. Okay. So I'm going to feel the same thing, tailbone towards the target. For me, my weight feels like it's about 55 on my left and like staying there. Left knees flexing, right leg straightening, pelvis or tailbone towards the target. Another nice one. Yeah. I like that line. I think that drill is such a good drill. I use that so often with my players that Steve had showed me along with having an object by the right hip. And then your job, right, is to figure out how much you need to feel that to get it correct. We're going to show you a bunch of versions here of what correct is. You'll see that from the behind angle with the tailbone moving towards the target, you could film from there. You could film from face on and use this object by your hip and create about an inch of space. So you need to feel whatever you need to feel to create an inch of space. The checkpoint there is the gold. Hips more forward, staying more centered, lower handicaps do it more, higher handicaps do that less. You're gonna hit the ball more solid, further, higher, et cetera. Steve? Reduce the early extension a little reduce bit. Reduce the early extension, you shake my hand, don't leave me hanging. Yeah. So if you guys have any questions about this, leave a comment down below, respond to them all. If you wanna get some coaching from Steve in person, we'll put his info down below in New Jersey or online at cornogolf.com. Highly, highly, highly recommend that you work with an expert like us or someone you like to give you a plan to focus on certain things, do certain amount of reps, certain drills, so that you're not mindlessly out there just trying stuff that's not gonna work and continue to have the same problems. Thank you guys for watching.